I've been teaching at the college level for about four or five years now, and I can say that I'm still just as uncomfortable being in front of the classroom as I was when I first began. The, the, the anxiety that I've been dealing with for pretty much my whole life, combined with this idea that I am an imposter professor, uh, really affects the way that I teach, and I'm always afraid that it might affect my students. I would best describe the imposter syndrome as feeling like you are in disguise every day and feeling like you don't belong in that disguise. Well, the real challenge ends up being that you have to convince yourself that you aren't the imposter. Um, and you have to sort of trick yourself into thinking that that's true. Uh, but that's way easier to say than to do. It's really helpful for me to have a routine both before I go to bed and when I wake up. Um, because having this routine, even though I know I'm still going to feel anxiety once I get to the classroom, um, the routine makes me feel grounded and makes me feel prepared to deal with whatever is about to come. Does anyone have any questions about the rhetorical proofs that you learned about in other classes? What rhetorical proofs deal with credibility? Good question. Um, that rhetorical proof would be ethos, and that paired with pathos and logos, those three make up the rhetorical proofs. Who is more important in rhetoric, the audience or the speaker? Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. Today was relatively normal um, as far as my anxiety goes. I didn't go, uh, I didn't get too anxious. I felt a little foggy, but nothing too crazy. So I would say today was a good day. In order to make sure I have more good days, I stay in my routine. I make sure that I do all of my work ahead of time. I do a lot of prepping, I do a lot of grading. I also spend time to myself. I try to wind down. I enjoy just looking out on my balcony and trying to relax and being thankful that um, I got through another day. <laughs> <laughs>